Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor Delorier, second moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Resolved that the agenda of December 5th, 2017, regular meeting council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delori, resolve the minutes of the November 21st special meeting council and the November 21st regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delori, resolve the Council of the Town of Swan River to hereby sit as a Board of Revision to revise the assessment rules for the year 2018. Further be it resolved by Mackenzie Service Chairperson and Julie Fothergill serve as Secretary of the Board. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. I declare the board open to hear the applications against property assessment. Okay. I'll swear everybody in. Do you swear that the evidence that you're about to give to this board of revision is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me done? Yes. Do you swear that the evidence that you are about to give to this board of revision is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me done? swear that the evidence that you are about to give to this Board of Revision is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. One application was received. Uh, Marilyn and Mark Peters are appealing the amount of the 2018 assessed value on the property, roll number 55800, lots 22, 23, Block 22, Plan 370, 524 River Park Drive. They state that this value is too high. Listen to the applicant. Is there information that you wish to provide that may not be in the application to Mark and Mary? So you can come to the table with me. Got some handouts here for everyone. Do you have a demo? Sure. Part of my presentation. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're on. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Councillors. When determining market value, the physical attributes of both the land and buildings contribute to the final estimate. While most factors are a positive adjustment, there are at times some that affect the value of a property negatively. So far, the assessor has only been concerned with verifying the information that would increase the assessment. Given the amount of increase and the manner in which it was done in office review, this concerns us. Why make all these changes and only want to confirm them if the homeowner questions it? How can the assessor, in good conscience, make significant adjustments for buildings he was never in? The supervisor who was here at the time we did our renovations and new construction performed a proper inspection. He actually came to our home and inspected it inside and out. Normally there needs to be a specific reason for an assessor to inspect the property. In correspondence with assessment, we were told that numerous properties in our area were reviewed as well as those belonging to staff. That's shown in some of those Excel sheets that I handed up there. We have put together some sheets showing the changes in our area for council's properties and assessment staff. It is of some interest to see the assessment decrease in the assessor's own home 
the only such change on the entire street. When studying these sheets, I would have expected to see above average increases on some staff holdings if such a review had actually taken place. The assessor's correspondence leaves us with the impression of the review maintaining a higher standard on employees' property. Our limited research leaves us with a different perception on what the assessor is trying to achieve by targeting our property. Okay, do Councillor or the Board have any questions? Yes, Councillor Councilor Sack. You said there was an inspector in your place. When was the last time like somebody from the assessment branch assessed your place? I believe it would have been around 2003. So that would have been after we completed any renovations at the home. There was nothing else added afterwards? Yes, Councillor Sack. If you had like a like a private assessment or anything like that, that appraisal, appraisal, sort of no. Thing? Any other questions? Okay, then I'll ask the assessor to give me the evidence. Do you mind if I come? No, that's fine. Yeah. Just Inspections are done of uh, staff or um, um, anybody working for the department within that uh, reinspection time. So when we are preparing for the next reassessment, um, our department is ensuring that all of our individual assessments are accurate. So um, as the Peters or Mark was working for the part department within the last re uh, reassessment, um, his property along with all of the staff and district supervisor were all uh, reassessed as well. Um, the reason for that is we want to be, be ensuring that we are, um, as the assessors or the district supervisor or staff for the, for the department, we want to be making sure that we are all assessed accurately um, as we're putting out the assessment and should be setting the example to make sure that we are all correct. So what I've done is um, we're comparing the, the Peters property to three comparable sales. Uh, the residential property being the subject property is set using the sales comparison approach. So we are using sales of comparable properties in order to be setting the, re the assessed values. So taking sales into consideration, um, we are basically using comparison number one. Um, on the sheet, and I've, I've show, also attached a map of where these properties are. So comparison number one, uh, the property is located at 600 Ross Street. Um, it is in the, the same desirable area, uh, being along the river. And um, it's the same type and quality, it's a one and a half story home. Um, similar in square footage to the subject property. Um, Built in 1975, which is um, a little newer than the subject <coughs> property. However, it's an original condition, whereas the Peters properties had some some um, changes to it. I would like to add that um, 
in various emails going back and forth to the Peters, I was never given the opportunity to do an interior inspection. Um, so this is based on the information that we have on file. Um, I wasn't able to get into it. So um, over the years, we will make um, some estimates on properties that we can't get into. Um, so that's what we have done. So I'm here to, to ask to confirm the assessment as to what it is using the sales comparisons of the properties. Uh, so continuing on, um, comparison number one is somewhat superior with numbers of bathrooms in the home. It's actually got three as compared to two. Um, a little superior with the basement finish as well. And it's got a wood stove where the Peters property does not. Um, it does have a veranda on the outside of the property, just like the Peters does. And um, instead of having an attached garage, it does not have an attached garage, but it does have an old style barn storage shed as well. So basically we're saying that property, it sold for 290,000 in uh, 2015 which works out to $156.93 per square foot. We are saying that the Peters property is currently assessed at $154.27 per square foot. The second sale, again, is in the same desirable area, which is uh, backing onto the river. Um, it's a little uh, newer home than the Peters. It is only a one-story residence. However, the square footage, the living area is 1,659 square feet, where the Peters is 1,802, slightly smaller. Um, with the renovations done to that home, we're saying it's very comparable uh, as it is sitting with 35% depreciation and the, and the Peters is sitting with 34% depreciation. Similar in bathrooms, it's got two and a half baths as opposed to two, but more basement finish in the home, 1,244 square feet compared to the 400. Um, it's got a carport and an attached garage built in 1980 where um, the Peters would have an, an age of 1981. Again, in the same desirable area. It sold for 301,000 in January of 2016, which is, works out to about $181.43 per square foot. Now it's a little higher as there seems to be a little different market based on a one story as opposed to a one and a half story. They, it's just a little bit different market. Um, if the one story seem to, or bungalows one story seem to sell a little bit higher per square foot as to the one and a half story. Comparison number three, um, a little further away, um, it is a by level with 1,280 square feet as opposed to the 1,800 square feet that the Peters have for living area, so it's a little smaller. Built newer though, it's 1993, so it's a little superior than, than the subject property. Being newer, it has a little bit less depreciation, but same amount of bathrooms. Um, about twice the amount of basement finish in it um, and a little bigger deck. It sold for 246000 in 2013 which works out to $192.19 per square foot. So we've got a range of our sales to set the assessed values of, of properties um, ranging from about 157 square feet to $192 per square foot and the subject property is sitting right at the below of that range of $140.27 per square foot. Okay, Tom's turn to any questions. So, the Peters property increased uh, by, what, 25% since the last reassessment in 2016. Um, would, so was it under-assessed in 2016? Is that... When, the, when uh, the inspection was done, there was more changes made 
to capture in our records than what we had. So we've adjusted for siding. There's been new siding, uh, soffit and fascia, shingles, windows, exterior doors. Um, we've estimated there's been some kitchen cabinets, some bathroom renovation, uh, some heating system. And we also upped the basement finish from about half, 194 square feet up to 400 square feet. For a question for the Peters. So all those improvements that she speaks of, were those done prior to 2016? They were done at the original, when the permit was taken out in around 2000. Um, if you look at our, the date built or effective date, 1981 on our property, all these comparables are close to that age or newer. But our house was actually built in 1949. And at no point have we been given the uh, opportunity to uh, review the effective age calculator to see what dates they used on the changes that were made. Um, a lot of these homes, looking at a property that is on nine acres, looking at a bungalow, looking at a bi-level, um, these are not very good comparables, in my mind. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yes. On November 1st, I had emailed Mr. Peters, um, sending them their detailed client report, giving them the information of what we had on our records. Um, on November 2nd, um, through emails, we spoke between, like, between the Peters and myself, November 3rd, November 7th, and November 10th. And through all of these emails, um, I'd asked the Peters to give me a call that we could set up a, a, an appointment to do an inspection or even to discuss. And um, in one of the emails, uh, they weren't outright agreeing to an inspection yet, um, although they did pick two dates, which I picked one that was going to be favorable with them to come and do an inspection, and they were not quite agreeing to do an, allow me to do an inspection at the time, so I basically said if they weren't um, getting back to me by a date, that I was assuming that they would not let me do an inspection. Um, in each email, I asked them to give me a call, I was willing to discuss it, to meet with them, even meet the day of the board, and I was never given the opportunity to get into a discussion verbally with them um, or do an inspection. Councilor Delory. So was, are, were you working for uh, assessment during this uh, reassessment cycle, like during the 2018 reassessment cycle? How does the process work for employees' reassessments? Do, does it go outside the district when employees are getting their, their own properties reassessed or do, do other people within the district reassess it? Or? It used to be where other people, other members of staff would go and inspect it, but now it's it can be a DS from another uh, district office. And then they will come in and do an inspection. And especially if, if the individual has gone to the board, it's just easier to have a third party come in from another office another district supervisor to come in from another office and take a look at it. I guess, you know, Should I it, don't, sorry, can I make Councilor White and then You said it could be another person from another department, was it? It was me. Okay, and you're that was trying to set, and I'm from the Minnedosa district okay, office. You. I'm the yeah. district supervisor. Okay, I'm just speaking from someone who isn't experienced in the assessment process. Um, all of these changes were made sight unseen, so no one came to our home, no one made an inspection of our home, um, and if it hadn't been, like for us, I mean, we get the notice, we see that it's gone up significantly, and so question why when we haven't made any changes in a number of years. And I feel that if someone can sit behind a desk, can check all the boxes and put in all the changes, and be willing to stand behind that, where is that person tonight? And why does an inspection, why do we need to allow someone to come in and see what they think they already know? Okay, yes. yeah. um, actually now we have moved in the last few years more to an electronic um, information system where we can access a lot of the information from Google Earth 
Um, we have a system called pictometry where we can actually zoom down and get side views of the property along with Google Earth. So it's, and we're moving more and more into those um, technology. In fact, um, likely next year there's going to be a flight done of this area and it will likely be taken a look at as a, another reassessment project of using pictometry. It doesn't get us into the insides, and um, this is why there's an opportunity if somebody doesn't agree with their assessment to come to us. They can come to us any day of the week, and we can certainly discuss it. To, if we're wrong, we'll definitely correct it. If they were renovating uh, the buildings, the building inspector reports are the, and the application for the building permits, they go to your office? We will, most times, we will get a copy of the building permit. Which I understand is what prompts an inspection, like there, there needs to be a reason. So I guess we just weren't sure why you know, we had an office review done on our property when there was nothing prompting that. The three comparable properties, how much did they go up from 2016 assessment cycle to 2018 assessment cycle? Comparable number one. Um, comparable number one actually went down slightly. Um, it was from the total value was 182.9 to 176.7. Comparable number two went from 256.600 to 272.900. And comparable number three went from 236,100 to 249,400. But our market values are not set using other reassessments, it's set using the sales. So actually, just answer my question, I was going to ask that everything basically assessment when you're doing the reassessment is based on the comparables and, and the sales of property. Correct. Except for when there's an actual sale, then it's then it uses the sale. No. No. Okay. It, it all sales are taken into consideration. Um, they are analyzed all together. It's not an individual sale of an individual uh, property. We take all of them into consideration and analyze them. Yes, Councillor Dory. Yes, Jacobson. Um, maybe this is a hard question to answer, but. On average, through the province, you know, I guess it's different for areas, each area. But when we see differences of maybe uh, minus one percent or whatever to, you know, uh, an increase of twenty-five percent, but is there an average that we see, like a, a trend in the province, maybe four percent or five percent or whatever? Actually, the Swan River area had about an on average a seven percent increase. So. Um, you know, Mr. Peters will be seeing the 7% increase and an adjustment because of the changes that we were made, or that we made to the role. So the ch the changes you made to the role were the, the new siding and, all, and right. all those things, but those things had been done in 2003. Yes, the last inspection. So, why, how, so, oh, so, the, and you said the last inspection was in, the last inspection was 2003. Actually, the last inspection was 2001. So, so 2001, and then they would have taken out their building permits for all their things. When you guys received the building per the building permit information, would that not have triggered the, the changes then? If we got into the building, um, we would have captured internal um, renovations if any were done. If we didn't get into it, it was really depending what the assessor did. If they just assumed from the outside that that's all was being done depending what kind of information we got on the permit. If it said, if the permit said new garage, was everything done at that time? You know, was the siding done and windows done or did they just get there and the garage was up? So it, it would all depend what the assessor did at that time. But standards, RAAO standards, IAAO standards, we are supposed to be inspecting every property every 10 years, once every 10 years. So this one was 16 years ago. 
and being a reassessment, we should all be up to date um, as staff uh, within that reassessment period for the 2018 reassessment. Okay, It shouldn't just be individual properties that are looked at every 10 years though. If they were to do a proper inspection, it should have been townwide or municipality, each one every 10 years. Um, and as we had said in our initial presentation, I'm not sure maybe um, she didn't capture that, but we did have an inspection inside and out. The district supervisor at that time for the assessment branch did it himself. So the changes would have been captured back then? Exactly. In 2001. So then what, so if, <clears throat> if the changes were captured in 2001, and you haven't made any changes since, what were the changes that were added this year? The changes that were made this year, and I had read them out. Yeah. Um, siding, soffit, fascia, roof finish, windows, um, exterior doors, um, kitchen cabinets, bathroom, uh, electrical panel. But those were all things that you guys had done in 2001. Yeah, everything that she's talking about is anywhere between 17 and 24 years old. So at that time, um, some of the uh, depreciation might not have been correct or we use what we call now as an effective age change. So um, if the house was built in say 1950 and um, the say the, the shingles were replaced in 2000, now we're applying an effective age to that. We can actually, in our computer system, change every single component of that house to the year that it has been changed. So if shingles were changed in 2000, we change it to 2000. If a bathroom was changed in 2010, we can change that now. So now we're more accurate with making the changes because we can break it down per component. A fellow co-worker at the time uh, made significant changes to their property as well. If their property had been reviewed at the same time as mine, I would have expected to see a similar increase on that as well. And I guess the other thing that we have to question is if everyone, if inspections were done, office reviews of every employee, including the district supervisor, and the average increase for the town of Swan River is a minimum of 7%, how did his go down? Councilor uh, Moore, just some clarification questions. So you said that the last inspection was like in 2001, so 16 years ago, and on average you said houses are re should be re-inspected every 10 years. We try and hit them every 10 so. years. Some we haven't, um, <coughs> just because of shortness and stuff. We just can't get to them all. So you're saying now with this, this... So in this six years we couldn't get that house re-inspected within the 16 years? Right. Mm -hmm. And then for this reassessment, then all of the staff were done to get everybody up to 2018. With this new pictometry coming, um, like most of Swan River will be done using it, so everybody will be up to date using the pictometry. It's just another tool now that we can use to do these reinspections. So all the staff were done for the 2000s? All of the staff, including the DS, were done. And so just for cl clarification, like the, the work that you were saying, like the shingle saying that was done prior to the 2001 inspection. Some of those dates is what I wanted to verify with the Peters, but was not given the opportunity to verify the exact dates of every single component of that house. That would have been something that I was trying to discuss. So there's the possibility that those things could have been factored in in the 2001 inspection and then reapplied in this it wouldn't inspection. be reapplied it would be updating it to the exact years of each component to ensure that we are correct or not correct because if years ago we couldn't reflect every single component now we can mm -hmm. so if the shingles were replaced in 2000 and we have them being replaced in 2005 we can correct that yeah. or if a bathroom was done in 2010 
and we have it in 2005, we can correct that. So, but but in, there's been no opportunity to be able to discuss the details. But in 2001, like when the details of that inspection, are you able to determine like, if those things were corrected at that time? Like, were those adjustments made? Some adjustments were made. Because um. I'm having trouble trying to picture like if the, that work was done prior to 2001, and then there was an inspection done in 2001. You should be able to confirm if those things were actually done or not. The stuff like, that I read out. Update if that was confirmed right. at that it's inspection. The stuff I read out was not captured in 2001. That's why we're doing it now. But so if it was done in prior, why wasn't it captured in 2001? Not to be argued about, just curious. Right. It, we're only as good as the last inspection we did. Any other questions, Councilor Sackett? So all the people that the other staff were you allowed into their homes to do the reinspection? I wasn't. Um, the DS for the office did those, um, and then now when we come to the board, then that's when a third party or another DS gets involved. You said that they, the Peters, weren't willing to let you visually go through them. Correct. And, and in our, in my district office. Um, I did all of my staff, and in fact, one of my staff, I had another just supervisor come in to do it. Any other questions or comments from anybody? Yes, ma'am. If I could just ask, I'm oh, sorry, is it Teresa? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so, as a DS supervisor, how many appeals in your area, like, do you see in your area on the average year? Like from staff. Per municipal. No, per, per rate payers. Well, we get quite a few appeals. Um, some of them, or most of them, actually are settled by agreements to revise assessments. So if if, an, uh, if somebody comes and says, you know, my assessment is wrong, um, we will go out and inspect it, and if we're wrong, we correct it. Um, Typically downwards? Down or up. So. Very few actually go to the board now because of the because of the agreements. We can but we won't inspect it by the board, but the council would receive those appeals. Absolutely, yeah. The board receives these. So appeals. if I just might ask the board, um, on average in the last five ten years, how many appeals do you have received? Okay. Does that? Raise a question. Well, I always wonder about that because I know people who have gone there and appealed and they said, oh, I got it lowered. In fact, mm -hmm. there are habitual complainants mm -hmm. and they, some, are, uh, for lack of a better term, babysat and they will have their almost semi annual decreases to keep their assessment stop. Constantly. I'm hard of hearing, so I'm sure I missed a little key point. I'm sure you said it. Why didn't uh, Why didn't you communicate when she said, "Can I come over?" Because that's a, that's. A I thought she was biased. Okay. Um, that came out. Sorry. That came out pretty early in our uh, emails. She made a mistake. She thought she was updating Blair mm -hmm. in uh, in what was happening with this, and she sent the reply to us. And. Uh, Following that, I didn't feel comfortable continuing with her. But I'm uh, sort of guessing, and she must have a supervisor to say, Yeah, hey, well, I'm comfortable. I'm going to go to the third party and get them in there. Yeah. Oh, tell you we, about the cheating here. But. We communicated with her via email. We responded to every email she sent us. We asked her to keep her communication in writing. And she did. I, yeah, I, will, I won't deny she tried endlessly to reach us, you know, even at our workplaces, which you know, we'd asked her not to, I mean, she didn't after that, but um, we asked her to keep her emails in, in the form of writing. And okay, any other comments or questions from the board members? Or Peter, do you have anything else that you wish to have? Does the assessor have any suggestions? Like, if, if they're not comfortable with you, so I'm going to take them aside and go ahead. Could you say, yeah, okay, why don't we get the, <coughs> if you appreciate, let's get the grand assessor and the independent person. Absolutely. 
Could you repeat that, please? Oh, I suggest you're apparently not quite comfortable. So maybe we could go to a third person or another local guy. Should maybe send a brand new person or some, some other individual. Would you be happy with that? If they were of mutual um, agreement to us, yes. Okay. I would like to say one thing. Um, actually, a couple. Um, when I responded to um, the Peters, I was actually responding to one in Russell um, and responded to you instead of to the one in Russell. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, if we are incorrect, whether we're high or low, um, I just ask that you confirm the assessment today and if the Peters will let somebody come in and do an inspection, I'm sure there's somebody within our department that would be more than willing to come out and do an inspection. So we would put that to the Peters and say, is that at all? Or I, I don't think we want to, I don't, I don't really want to confirm the assessment because I, I would like to pursue the third party issue, but I have to confirm the assessment. I, I would imagine to give them less recourse. Exactly. So I you know, well, I've got questions to go to a uh, mutually third party assessor that both sides can uh, I'm just throwing that out you can say no yes. I agree with Councillor Delorier. If we are somewhat agreeing to confirming the assessment today, um, that didn't, doesn't give us much option for the future. I, I won't be voting to confirm the assessment today, so I, but I'd like to, I, having said that, I don't know what a valid assessment is, but something doesn't sit right with this, I'd like to see a third party, so that'd be where I'd like to stand ahead. I think we can have all parties agree. I'm not sure that we have we have the right to do that. We we need just um, our department needs a decision to come soon because the way it goes is so whatever the decision be, um, if you're one how, how soon is soon? Uh, it closes on December fifteenth. So, so ten days. It's got to be entered right through the system, so the order has to come through. In order for us to get it in so is it even possible to to agree on somebody having here in 10 days the board has we have to meet again within the 10 days then to confirm. Probably not. Probably not. I, I don't think so it did say the reason if we set the assessment for today they can just go back to make them the facts they can go back to it, but there's nothing saying assessment has to change it. And the Board of Revision, is where the, we get to change it if we want to, and if we're confirming theirs. Third party comes in and says the same thing as what this party says. And we delayed it a whole other year. We hired the assessment reps to do a job, to do comparisons. Should another assessor or DS come out to do an inspection? It can go up, it can go down. It's been a long time since an interior inspection has been done. So it can go either way. Just so everybody knows that. Yes. I just, uh, nothing against the Peters, but I feel that this could maybe even end it if, if you would allow them into your home. Like, I let them into your home. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to check it. I, I don't understand. That's the part I don't understand. So. We hired the assessment branch to do a job and they do more comparisons and how she explained it. I don't know how we can argue with it. My problem was with the original increase due to a caucus review. And she can talk about pictrometry. Um, that doesn't give you the ability to pick out things like a small amount of heating in the garage, uh, partition wall, kitchen cabinets. How do you get out for all that with the coffee? I retired in January of 2016, and 14 months later, all of a sudden there was this need for an office review and a big increase in home assessment. When the DS himself gets a decrease in his. I just think there's lots of fishy fish that we see on the up and up to us, the repairs. I think what will happen is the 
the board will discuss it and we'll make a decision one way or the other tonight. So unless somebody has anything else to add, thank you very much for your information and your participation. Thank you very much for your time. Yes. How much would you have sold your house for two years ago? Our house hasn't been, you haven't even thought about it? I've often thought about buying your house. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, no, because this is after we close the hearing. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm asking it for. I want okay. for information for my decision. I'm not asking to make a joke. Okay. Even though I was, but I was asking. I honestly me. couldn't put a number. Yeah. We hadn't completed it. Um, we've had a lot going on in our lives the last couple of years. Selling into like the first. Thing. So what? I guess maybe I'm afraid of best is what would you think your house is worth? To? I'm not even going to. Okay. Thank you. I just plan on board here. Thank you. Okay, uh, item, we're down to item 5 1 on the agenda. We have the Northwest Regional Library 2018 budget. Discussion? Yeah, Councillor Jacob Kenning and Councillor Gloria. Well, I guess we see some increases there that were uh, maybe there's some things missing in there, and I feel that from what we understand that you know, there's some dollars that are supposed to come from insurance agencies as far as the renovations of the roof and you know, whatever else that was done. So I don't feel that the you know the, the document that we have is maybe completely complete. Not seeing those there, so. I'd have to backtrack on There is a resolution to close it to adjourn it here. Motion moved by Council Clare, second by Council Moore, is all the board now adjourn. Favor? Okay. Continue on. Uh, that was my only comment. Council Clare. Could we ask the uh, manager to come to council and put the budget? I would, I would think we could send before they even do that. It's defeated and send it back to the board and let them define it a bit. Mm -hmm. When they do come to council, bring their their actual budget that they would do want to pass. Same result. So we have the motion by Council Mallory, second by Council Moore, to resolve the Northwest Regional Budget be approved. Discussion. All in favor. Opposed. Okay, you have the superintendent works report. Any questions to uh, Derek? Council White. How are you cleaning the highway? The highway from the highways or the end of the private contract? Uh, right now, the plan is to do basically a test run of Ford and Main Street, all of it. <coughs> Just to see what the actual costs are. We have estimated costs, but it'd be nice to know what the actual costs are so that we can actually, you know, go into NYT with one of these agreements and actually receive some money as opposed to just doing a section and just having a straight loss. Because they will not pay us a pretty good portion, they won't pay us a pretty good amount. I think it's too bad the cost varied with the stove level, fall? Yeah. So you say we have four inches of stove cost. Uh, we would determine when we're like right now. Obviously, when we clean it off, we wait for the next or possibly the one after the snowfall. Once the parking lanes get as bad <coughs> as they were, but uh, to a point where the all agree needs to be done, we have a meeting with a contractor to get this done as kind of a test pilot. Council Morgan and then Council Boyle. Um, you haven't heard that you're meeting with the, the contractor for like handyman deficiency. Yeah, there's storage one there. What are the deficiencies are there? 
Uh, right now, it's just the uh, open plugs need to be pulled out from the back of the wall. There's it's a safety. Uh, and the eaves drops out. Nothing. So on the, your pilot project on Main Street, there, if they're going to highways knows not to clean it, not to do their wing on their way out of town. We want them to do their wing. Oh, they will do their even wing on the way out of town. Even if we do this agreement, I still want them to put it apart. Okay. Because okay. then Main Street will play. Okay. Have you talked to them lately so that they're aware of that? Because we've heard rumors that they think that they don't have to do anything. Uh, as far as I know. Yeah. Okay. So it may have just been. Rumors. I just don't. I just wouldn't want it to not happen next snowfall. Nothing happens. Well, as far as my thoughts, that even if we do get agreement, I still want them to drop that weight on the way out of town. So we need to let the council for ACs in going forward. Like right now, I think they're completely off the hook. The team and Main Street. Nothing's changed. No, the rumors at least are suggesting otherwise. Um, <clears throat> there, we had a chance to sit with the minister uh, last week uh, and discuss this particular item. And uh, they are in the process of reviewing and making some changes with MIT and how they deliver their services and so forth. They've asked to perhaps come up with some kind of a solution on what can be done. Obviously, it's not going to be done this year, but maybe something that's moving forward. So I just want to make sure that you kind of keep that. You know, in the back of your mind, someplace that we can have that discussion of what maybe uh, slow move or whatever type of services that we, we need for, for streets that right now MIT is taking care of. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? If not, motion moved by Council Delore, second by Council Mora, resolve the superintendent works report be received. Discussion? Favor? Council has the fire department to uh, report. Any questions? If not, we have the resolution of the Council Glory, second the Council Memorial, resolve the fire department report for November 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? You also have the bylaw enforcement officers report for November. Any questions to Julia or Tim? Councilor Morial. Um, in his report, Ms. Lucas says that the park patrol tickets one issue. Can we uh, have them have more like include the location where it is so that we can see track trends as to where the parking issues are? If it's, just, if it's always in the same area, we may have an issue signing or something. Okay. Any other questions? The motion moved by Council Delore, second by Council Mora, resolved that the bylaw enforcement officer report for November 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, you also have a handy van report. Any questions? Do you have a handy van report? <coughs> Not the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Council White, to resolve the handyman report for November 2017. We received discussion. All in favor? We also have the minutes of the management meetings. Any questions to Julie or Derek on the management meetings? Um. With, uh, oh, did you guys hear back, you yourself or Terry, anything from uh, Reverend Canada regarding charitable status and what are and what we are possibly wanting to do? Have you had any discussions at all? No, I've never called there twice. So we have not signed an office to your case yet. Mm -hmm. okay. Councilor Moyle. Um, we in our fair chief's section there is the, the SCPA press 
opportunities of service in the location in the What kind of costs are associated with that? I think what was happening is getting a, uh, it's a, new, a one new one that's been sitting in the amaranth, I think, that has never been used in Harbor, Harbor through the fire commissioner's office. So, so that's not an improvement that the town knows, that's how that the office of fire commissioner is all the time. Uh, 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 Council members and CAO reports. Help in mind first, council is fresh back from the AMM convention and it was a busy time for councils at AMM convention. Uh, we met with four different cabinet ministers uh, and we met with the RCMP and uh, starting with the RCMP, the matters of concern were uh, coverage uh, for 24 hours a day. <coughs> Also, the availability of the auxiliary constable, and uh, I'm going to miss something there, but that pretty much covers it. Uh, cost of arts and are also concerned. A meeting with the infrastructure minister of infrastructure. I was not part of that meeting because I was on the resolutions committee, but perhaps one of the other councillors can fill in on that. Uh, I was in on the meeting with the minister of health, along with councillor Sample. And uh, we were in the foot and bottom Thompson. The two areas that we brought to the minister's attention, just to keep reinforcing it. The first one was uh, the fact that the valley is going to be working towards having a CT scanner, and that we hopefully can make a financial case for that CT scanner, but it's probably more cost efficient to have it here and have ambulances run back and forth to go off and get people for CT scans. And the other one was to push the issue to have. 52nd parallel set right across the province for air transport for air ambulance. Okay, we also met with uh, Minister of Sustainable Development uh, and uh, a list is, I think, Councillor White's list was brought to uh, Councillor Sapper to probably fill us in on that because he uh, did talk in that particular session. But uh, I'll let him fill that in and I'll let other councillors and fill in some of the other ones. But, for the most part, I think we're very productive with it and uh, some good motivational speakers and a lot of good networking with people from other uh, municipalities. Councilor Mori. Um, not much to add to what you uh, added already. I was at AMM last week. Um, so besides what you added, I was in the same, a lot of the same sessions and we did a good week to network and see different suppliers and whatnot. So they don't. Uh, Concert or uh, the only place I can fill in is with MIT. There sounds like uh, they would really want to look at uh, turning light at the Max. It's not Max anymore, but the subway. So and we and they were aware that we had just sent in another letter, right? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. we sent the letter. Yeah, uh, but within the last couple of months, we had sent in another letter. Within a month. Within a month, yeah, because his bureaucrat was was aware of it. So when. So obviously they, they know what our situation is, so that would be, as far as public safety, that would be huge. Uh, and that's pretty much it for me. Councilman Jacobs. Uh, just in the last couple of weeks, I guess, uh, we had an opportunity to meet and greet with the doctors here. Uh, I thought that was pretty beneficial and welcoming uh, two of our local people into the community back uh, was, uh, was a great thing. Uh, I had a good discussion with Dr. Burnside about CT scanners and him saying that on average, you know, they order about two CTs a day and one of those is usually ordered by ambulance to Dauphin or wherever. So I think like the mayor said that, you know, we're gonna put a case together and, and prove that there's probably some uh, some cost savings that uh, we can uh, prove that we need or could have a CT scanner in Swan River. Uh, the Splash Park meeting, Councilor Dory and I both attended that one, and uh, it was a good meeting. Uh, obviously, there's been some talk about them saying that all we need to have, you know, town operation and capital costs covered, but definitely that was not in the discussion at all. Mm -hmm. They're clearly knowing what. Uh, what we're saying as far as our resolution saying that we're not going to be paying any capital or, or any operating costs. And then there's also the discussion about some dollars that they have committed to them through some uh, uh, people that are willing to donate some large sums of money, so which is a good thing for them. 
And uh, we talked about the Kinsman site versus the Wallace site, so they're kind of leaning that way. So I think we have a resolution coming for that. As far as the M or the uh, AMM, yeah, it was good, and Mayor covered most of that off too as well. But uh, with uh, MIT, we did discuss the snow uh, clearing problem on Main Street, and they're willing to have full discussion about that kind of a plan that we can put in place. Um, Turn white too, as Councilor Deloria had mentioned. RCMP, we talked to them about uh, changing the, the time and filling in the gaps, obviously, uh, from uh, early morning till uh, whatever, six o'clock in the morning, so that we can kind of curb the problems that we have during the summer months. Big discussion with the cannabis file and all that that everybody knows about. So we, uh, we had the, uh, the one breakout session and they had set up the room for I don't know how many people, and I thought, geez, this room was gonna fill up pretty quick, and it did, they're setting up chairs, that great thing that the other breakout sessions were poorly visited, but not you know equally important, but uh, definitely there's some big, big discussion and, and how this whole thing is gonna come down, and it's gonna affect us, and it's gonna uh, see that, you know, within the community, whether you like it or not, and what I mean by that is, you can't stop them because it's gonna be coming by, you know, you can do online shopping, or you can buy it in your, local stores in town, so unfortunately, or fortunately for some, whatever, that uh, it, it's going to happen, so thank you. Thank you. Councilor White. Well, that's got to be the shortest one ever. It's going to be the shortest one ever. Uh, this, the Safe House team met with Minister Fielding last weekend. They keep all optimistic, but we'll see how it goes, so they're staying positive. And the doctor's luncheon, I, I echo what a wonderful uh, activity that was, but there's a comment made that a bell's going off all over me. And it said one of the goals is the pharmacist. So I made a point of talking with them after. They don't want a pharmacist to sell drugs. They don't want to have, have stock drugs for, the, for for sale. They want a pharmacist to show them how to put prosthetics on, how to put the needles in. Well, it's certainly nothing to do to compete with the local pharmaceutical industry. So I've got it, but that's great enough. Uh, Prairie Mountain Health actually got to that on Saturday. And uh, again, uh, often area and the lack of the MRI is, is a big issue of that prayer about health. I don't think we're going to be saying that at all that would be up to the minister. So thank you. Okay. Councillor Sacco. I'd like to welcome Councillor White back and say we missed him at AMM. His uh, dedication to this town of Swan River is should be commended. He just got out of the hospital today and under all our uh, wishes or orders to tell him to stay home, he still came to council tonight so Nice to see you back and glad to see you're healthy. Uh, yes, AMM was full three days jam packed of, of meeting ministers and uh, different breakout sessions, which I always find is uh, very, uh, very good uh, to meet with the ministers. Like, I know we, we try our hardest to meet with the health minister to keep showing that uh, Town of Swan River isn't going to give up and having our face in their face, I guess, uh, letting them know that we're steady pushing for our health care in this community and letting them see that we, uh, we're we not going to give up the CT scanner. You know, we talked to them about it. They were, they were, you know, they were listening. They, they liked our idea. They said, bring it back, show us a case file of uh, possibly some funds being saved, and they would definitely look at it. Uh, the RCMP was another another good uh, another good meeting. We meet with them every year over various various town uh, issues that we have. Uh, the big talk with cannabis, even the RCMP are are concerned because they don't even have the proper training or the proper tools at this point to be ready to go for July second when the federal government is allowing the sale of cannabis. So that that kind of worries me. The extra police costs and and uh, that are probably going to arise of this cost for our municipality is yet to play out so you know there's going to be some concerns there and we also brought up prescription drug uh, abuse within the valley here and they had talked about doing a crime trend analysis in, in the area so they're going to kind of have a look at if it is a problem where they can kind of uh, see see the problem arising from it and they're also going to do an analysis on to when the break-ins are, what time, of, what time of day they are, and, and see if we have a case for trying to get an officer to stay over over uh, those late hours that we seem to be missing. Um, met with the Minister of Sustainable Development, had a nice little list, you know, compliments of Councillor White. Uh, we're 
talking about the moose population in the valley, which a lot of people wonder why maybe we might be looking into that, but that is an economic driver for our community. We are in a in an area where hunting is a big big part of it, and and I think they uh, they have a long road ahead of them. Uh, there's a slight increase in the moose population, but until they can get all parties to agree on how the hunt should take place, they're not going to open it. Um, I'm fine by that. I think all parties have to be together and they have to come up with an agreement to have a sustainable moose population. They are going to do a, um, an elk count because now that the moose uh, season has been closed for five years, there's some worry that the elk population is taking, uh, taking the beating for that now. So, so they're going to be doing a study this winter, they say. Another thing we talked about in and uh, Rise is looking at trying to get more trails and, and get more uh, more people out there and allowable trails for ATVs in through the park. So they're they're definitely receptive to that. They want to see some mapping. They want to see some ideas. Um, they asked if I go on a, a I guess a working group with them, and I definitely said I would definitely take part of that. So. So that was good and positive. Cash Lake cabins within our area, two beautiful cabins that under the old government were going to get destroyed. So now uh, now they see that there's some value there and they want to repurpose those as best they can and they have some a couple offers there. I want to talk completely about that. So that was kind of some some key uh, key points there. But yeah, that's all I have to Thank you. See you in the report. I also attended AMM with everyone, and, um, and I'd just like to say that I'm always impressed as to how every single council member is so involved and concerned about our community, and I'd like to say that we missed you, Dwayne. Well, good. <laughs> and, um, and I'm just getting caught up on the way. Okay. We'll go to bylaws and resolution. First one, the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor White, resolved at bylaw 23 2017, being bylaw to the town of Song River, authorizing the payment of remuneration to a member of council be read first time discussion. So this leaves everything the same for the next year then? All in favor? Carried. Okay, the next one has to do with Sunday of holiday shopping. This is impacted because uh, Boxing Day falls on a Sunday. <coughs> so the so, uh, purpose here is to change the bylaw to be able to accommodate that year round. Yes. We have the motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor White. There's all that bylaw 25, 2017, being bylaw of the town of Swan River, permit holiday and Sunday shopping in the town of Swan River be read a first time. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor White, resolved that bylaw 24, 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish standards of construction and maintenance of water and sewer service pipes within the town of Swan River be read a second time. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Jacobs and seconded by Councillor White resolved that bylaw 24, 2017, being a bylaw of the town of Song River, to establish the standards of construction and maintenance of water and sewer service pipes within the town of Song River, which read a third time and be passed. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Um, back on bylaw 20, uh, 25, I think I think there's a in the very last paragraph it doesn't make sense. The, there's a word something not right with the wording. It says uh, I think then we won the holiday shopping one. Uh, it says between 9 a.m. and after 6 p.m. So should it not be 
between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Because what, what is the 9 a.m. between? You have to have two things to compare, right? Can you use the word between. Can we make that change on second reading? Yeah, but I just yeah. wanted her to be aware of it, to make that change. I, I just changed the time. So um, I just changed the time between 12 noon. <laughs> between 9 a.m. Yeah, members of the public uh, are selling any goods between 9 a.m. So be between 9 a.m. and what? It should be before 9 a.m. Yeah, it should be after. before 9 a.m. or after 6 p.m. So we need to change that word between, between to, to before. before. Okay. okay, so we're okay to make that on second reading. Yeah, I, I'm okay. happy with the intent. I think the intent of it, everybody knew, but I just didn't want it to us to pass it with a mistake. Okay. So we have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve the Council's follow, but hereby approve for payment. General accounts from check 2165 to 21693 for a total of 215,767.16. And payroll account from check 4111 to 4117 for a total of 102,1457. Questions to Julie? Um, yeah. 21658 Ice Marketing Consultant. What kind of marketing are we doing for? Since so you're the next one, you're going to put the glass and tempered glass. Oh, so that must be who makes the, the, the actual pictures then? The arena parts of glass. So it must be replacement. Where do you get that? It's the next file in the. I attached a listing that Terry did for us. Oh, he, pre he preempted our, uh, yes. our questions? Yes, he did. Oh, wow. Well, tell him you'd be happy to know that one of them was actually asked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> last time um, I got it attached, and last time I had it with me, and there was no questions. So. Okay. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Carry. Okay. Council has the financial statements ending the 31st of October. There's also some comments that go with it from our chief financial officer. Things that are outstanding or things that we're waiting for. Questions to Julie? The motion was moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve the financial statements for the month ended October 31st. Be accepted. Adopt is received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sack, was all this Chief Administrative Officer be authorized to sign the 2018 contract for video services as per attached Schedule A. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Call your answers. That's what I still want to, I don't want to. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sack, to resolve the following invoice to be added to property taxes. Uh, 13349, September 21st, Leon Church, $100. Discussion? Councillor Morial. Do we know what that invoice is for? Yes, I do. We have an offense notice uh, that was issued on September 12th for a dog, a dog running at large. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sacco. Is all fallen invoice uh, is uncollectible and written off. Uh, invoice 12805, uh, March 22nd, 2017. Roger Joseph Quill, 212.50. Is that water? No, this was an offense notice that was issued March 22nd for illegal dumping of rubbish in town here. And we have been unable to uh, contact this person. Like, uh, Discussion? All in favor? Chair. The 
Moore's Loop Accounts Memorial, second accounts for resolve in town purchase Christmas greedy advertisement for Valley Biz at the cost of $100. Discussion? Mm, did we do this last year? I thought we did this last year. I don't think our taxpayers get any value out of that. Last year, I think we defeated and we each had the option of putting our own in. That's true. All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Defeated. <coughs> Motion to move by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. Do you want me to read the whole order? Or is it just the uh, grassroots committee of dedicated community volunteers is formed for the purpose of creating an outdoor splash park in the town of Swan River. And whereas the town of Swan River repeats the efforts, uh, appreciates the efforts of the SVSB committee, the town of Swan River has invested millions of dollars in capital funding toward recreation communities in the last decade, including an arena upgrades, the West End soccer pitches, baseball, the skate park, indoor aquatic center, among other items. Will no, with no further capital funding for new recreation amenities be outlined in the town capital plan in the foreseeable future. Therefore, be it resolved the town of Swan River supported principle the commendable efforts of the Swan Valley Splash Park Committee be it further <coughs> resolved that the town of Swan River be making no contribution to capital funding for the purpose of the Splash Park facility. And further be it resolved the town of Swan River supports the support Whole splash park being located on the site of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center, and the splash park project proceeded to Town of Swan. Will allow SVSB to construct the splash park on the site of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center. And be further resolved that the SVSB committee shall furnish a detailed report outlining the estimated yearly operating costs of the proposed splash park for security for scrutiny by the town's recreation staff. Said report shall be provided prior to the issuance of any construction tenders or contracts or any works that are performed on the site. And be further resolved that SESB committee seek out and develop an agreement for funding assistance with the yearly operating costs with willing partners and community groups prior to the issuance of any construction tenders or contracts or any works performed on the site. The town of Swan River shall be consulted on the details of any funding agreements. Discussion, Councilor Jacobson. As I said in my report that uh, when we met with the committee, they made it very clear to us that they did not want to put any of this on the taxpayer of Thomas Water as far as the capital or any of the operating costs. And they are working with uh, local service groups and all that for some long-term commitments. So they made that very clear and, and I want to make sure that we, we, we all understand that as well. So we're here that. I agree with you completely and commend the concept. That sentence, the fourth, one, two, three, fourth line down, would be further resolved that the town of Swan River would make no contribution to capital funding or operating of the proposed glass park facility. I think that operating has to be in there. I don't see it anywhere else. But it's a wonderful idea, but at the moment we don't have any money. And unless it's in there, it's not in there. Same operating should be included in there also. Absolutely. I think that was our consensus before, was not. But for the result, tell us whether we'll be making no contribution to capital funding or operation or operation expenses for the proposed cost part. Then it's it's there, it's in print somewhere, and, and you know, otherwise it's left as ambiguous to me. Okay. Regardless of what this group thinks and agrees with, and that group thinks and agrees with the next team might say, hey, you didn't say that in your deal. So we have to amend the resolution. Okay, yeah. Make motion to amend the resolution at that time. Second, moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor, and the whatever line, whatever, fourth, fourth I'll say paragraph. paragraph, okay? Just write it in. Okay. We'll just get the mover and second for two initial. I couldn't have that much more feeling in his life in the hospital reading this stuff. So, so and further be it resolved, the town of Swan River will be making no contribution to capital funding or operating funding for the proposed splash park facilities. D21.
it would have to be the mover and seconder of the original or the lot. Probably, yeah. yeah. Resolution. All in favor? Carry. The motion moved by Council Memorial, second by Council Blur, is all that the attached utility bills be added to the property tax roll. Discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Sack to resolve the following building permit uh, applications be received. David Paul Engine, demo, no cost. Erin Lillick, demo, no charge. Erin Lillick, renovation, $70,000. Terry Danita Grange, $13,000. Discussion? All in favor? Mr. Carey. <coughs> So we have the motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Lurie, resolved that the appeal with respect to the 2018 assessment rule 55800 in the Town of Swan River be received. And we further resolve the 2018 assessment with respect to rule 55800D and the blank. The resolution is blank. Discussion? Well, I, I understand what Councillor Sapp was saying. We hired them to do a job. and But in my mind, for someone's assessment, when they haven't changed anything in, in the two years previous to go up that much, even as compared to his neighbors, compared to the average, they weren't doing their job. Whether whether they're doing it now and they weren't doing it before, but at some point they weren't. And now there's somebody who's being punished for them not doing their job. Councilor Jacobson. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. In 2001, they said that they, which was the last inspection, and in the inspection they found that it basically covered all of the renovations or the major renovations of that home from what I understood you're not agreeing with that no well they said she said they covered up a bunch of things but she said then there was new roofing new soft yeah, well, that gonna, was all done before yeah. 2001 she said that well, I was gonna get to that she, she said but they said that nothing had changed since 2001 so so anyway uh, it covered off the majority of the, of the renovation of the home so then there was a list of siding or soffit and fascia and all that was done i think in 2016 or something like that but i still i, I don't even know how that could be even equate to 18 percent if we look at seven percent being the average in in the in the community 18 percent uh, uh I don't know how I, I can't believe that if it was just soft and fascia. And if you, if you look at anybody else in here that has done some renovations, they none of them are seeing, well, we don't even know them all, but they're not seeing 18% increases. Councilor Sapp. I'm going to agree with some of that stuff. Uh, the part that I don't like is this could have maybe not even came to the table. Uh, there's a third party has something to do with Russell. I think they are looking for any excuse, okay. pardon me, I'm, I'm not saying nothing against them, but to not let these people into their house. Now, if they would have let them into the house and they would have did an inspection, and then if she would have sat there and said, I think they, I think the Peters would have had a better case with them locking the doors on these people that that's their job, if they want to get into your house and you're not allowing them, now, they, now they're playing the game. He knows the game. He knows nobody's going to uh, come here before 10 days. She said that if they're wrong, they will pull the assessment back. Nobody's getting penalized. They're just paying their fair market share. Looking at the value of that house, you asked him, what would you sell that house for? I could ask you, what would you sell your house for? You could give me a number. You could give me a number. You could give me a number. He avoided that question on purpose because he wouldn't sell that home for $278,000 today. Councillor Moore. Um, to me, there's there's something wrong here. There's there's 
Why wasn't things caught in the 2001 inspection that was supposed to be done before? Um, to me, there's, there's this is like, um, like Councilor Saka said, uh, it's a lab. We could have probably, we're trying to be forced into a middle work. If they would allow these people to go in and do their inspection, this would probably be a non issue. Uh, it's, there's, there's things going on here that we're not getting the full picture, and we're trying to be uh, put in the middle of a, a dispute here where um, it could have been easily settled by let somebody into your um, home to actually do it. Um, I don't know the Peters um, at all. Um, so it's like if, if the obviously if he knew that there could have been a potential third party, why didn't he ask if he had an issue with that in um, the assessment here from Minnesota as to why they couldn't didn't didn't trust her? She was the third. You got a thing in my mind. Third, but like he could ask, well, I need somebody else to send this to somewhere else. Like, Apply to the phone so, calls and he's okay, he's speaking. Oh, so so it's um, to me there's issues on both sides and they could have been easily settled and we're trying to settle a fight between these two buildings. Councilor Sack. I agree with Councilor Morio. I think there's a little bit of sour grapes there between him and his last employment, which happens to be the assessment branch. I don't know what it was and I don't think we're getting the whole story, but I think if there's gonna be a fourth party that's gonna come in, and if they feel that there's something wrong with it, they will readjust it. I, I, I don't know what other way to do it. Do we leave it on hold or do they get a break? Because to me, they're getting a break. If their house is worth the 278 and we've been taxing them only at 221, we give them a break for another year because they won't let the people in to do their job. I just have a problem with that. If they would let the people in, it's like if you, if you disagree with what the people in to do the proper inspection versus looking through the windows. I don't think the, the assessment is unfair because you're right. I, I think that house is probably worth that. It's a very nice property, but something is, is wrong and he, something smells fishy in all of this, especially when when you show some of the data that he showed. He showed that this data for a reason. He wanted to point this out. And I mean, he pinpointed some data. Yeah. So, and I mean, that's pretty fishy data. He did pinpoint if something doesn't smell right. But as far as what doesn't smell right, but what do, does actually smell right, they, their assessment probably, is, I'm not an assessor, but just knowing what you hear houses sell for and what houses list for, that seems, that's why we hire somebody to make this decision. We don't have the. We're put in a very difficult position. Absolutely. Was that Mr. Bear? What is that? Okay. What did you say? We're put in a difficult position. Oh. I agree. I've never had a situation where you had uh, a property that belonged to as a person that's far employed by the assessment tax. So, what is our role? Like, we have to make we a can decision. To make tonight, a decision. We have to we accept what they it? said, no, or else we can change it. We, we can, can revise change it. it to some number. We're the board of revision. We get to revise the tax rules. We can go with the assessment as recommended by the assessment. And we make that decision right, right here now. tonight. Yeah, we're right time within the next 10 days. So, somebody then has to make a recommendation of what it needs to be. Is that a resolution? That's well, if you were in second or have a signed resolution, so you guys are moving in second in the well, resolution. That would be you two. That's Us two. Yeah, so what's the... <laughs> I, I moved it. Yeah, you moved it. So it's going to do successful match. And he can still be right. right. That's no, right. we are the final. Um, so I'm hoping that the uh, assessment stays as is. Confirmed. I know we, we are put in a tough place and it's not a it's not a fun place I'm concerned, but if they don't agree with that they can ask for a reassessment next year and get reduced back to uh, that's if they don't believe the people, the staff that we have in town, they don't believe the lady from Minnesota, I guess even when we asked him if he would go for the fourth party, he didn't say yes full out, he said on approval of a mutual person so was there other people he doesn't get along with that that threw up red flags for me too he didn't just say 
sure, bring in a fourth person and let's use them. She agreed to that. She agreed, but the the, the people, the Peter said, upon a mutually agreed person. So if they bring in another person in the assessment branch and he doesn't agree with that person, so, so like, he's why saying no again. Even that, why, why did he bring forward um, an independent realtor's assessment like from Scott Tibble or Gary McKay that does property assessment? That's what I asked for right at the very beginning of the appraisal. Which they do. Because we know what it probably would have been. Because I go to an appraisal on our cottage and that's what we're looking at probably selling it to so the real estate people are appraising and giving me a value. Thank you for the discussion. So. I guess, is he the only. How, I, I wish I would have asked now, but how many people got the. You know, he obviously got more a more in depth assessment than, you know, just the Joe Blow. Like, what, what did you call it? Uh, behind the desk assessment, basically. How many people got those? And how, how many of those people, like he, he was about 21% uh, higher than, than just a regular person getting a reassessment. Yeah. How, many, how, many, how many, in how many cases does that cause him to, to skyrocket like this? Or was he the only one? The solution yeah. was oh, the lady from Minnesota come and look. And I, or, I, I don't know. Like I, I hate to play the devil's advocate, but maybe he hadn't been assessed because he worked for the assessment branch and they were maybe got skipped out for a few years. I'm not saying that's what happened, but careful. Well, and on, on Councilor White's comments, I, I can understand his hesitation when you think all the cards are stacked against you. Do you really want to give them a couple more aces? I don't see that. Uh, I see it as clear in the water. Yeah. If I was him, I would have got a, a private assessor, actually. Well, we'll never get another party. Councilor Jacobson. Uh, maybe, I don't know if this is part of it, or maybe it's something to look at, but in all the assessments, or the ones that we brought to the cases of, I see one that has a decrease of almost 1%, and that kind of makes me wonder, like, what's going on there? And that's and also, somebody with renovations. Absolutely. So... That's a red flag, but it has nothing to do with this right now as the decision. Well, it, it kind of does because it throws into like, is the system fair? Is he not pointing out maybe there is some some systematic unfairness? Just Perhaps to, there is. So then, do we open them all up for a whole total of the whole town or whatever? Maybe the province needs to be looking at this. And that's maybe that's beyond us. Well, it is, but that just say maybe this, this is a red flag that the province needs to be looking at. This local and just say what's going on here. Do some real time. The unfortunate part is I think there's some hidden message or hidden problems that we haven't seen in the past, and now we're getting forced with the decision. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Okay, we'll go to the resolution. The motion moved by Councilor Morial, second by Councilor Lurie, to resolve the appeal with respect to 2018 assessment roll 55800 in the town of Sullivan River be received, and further be resolved the 2018 assessment with respect to roll 5800 be confirmed. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. The assessment is confirmed. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sack, to resolve that pursuant to Section 152 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Carried. 